Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. Next speaker, I invite uh, Bas Westerbaan. Uh, you might have seen him yesterday. Uh, Bas Westerbaan is a mathematician with an interest in quantum computing and cryptography. Currently, he is a research engineer at Cloudflare. Previously, he worked at PQ Shield, University College London, and the Digital Security Group at the Radboud University. Uh, welcome, Bas. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for uh, having me twice. Um, but uh, this is great what Almer is working on. We really have to test these things early and I feel we're already a bit late. So I'm really happy to see that uh, we're not the only ones who are already really looking into this. Because to test these things, you have to test them, right? You can't just keep talking about it. Okay, so um, uh, yesterday I gave an overview of, uh, on the issues, where we are with the internet, how the key agreement is fine and how the signatures are difficult. Uh, I want to dive into the signatures today. Uh, I want to talk what we have now, what's on the horizon, um, and the map and the things that are uh, uh, what we're looking at, how we can cope with, and things how we can work around the terrible set of signatures we have. Uh, yeah. So uh, the, on the horizon, there's some there's an on ramp by NIST uh, where we expecting. The, I think we saw a slide yesterday with the 16 candidates of which half already was broken. So I'm going to cover the few that are interesting. Um, and then I want to discuss a few coping strategies, specifically leaving out intermediates, ChemTLS, uh, and Merkle tree certificates. Um, so as a reminder, there's a lot of signatures on the web uh, when visiting the website. Again, ignoring DNSSEC, we're looking at uh, 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 signature of the root on intermediate, the intermediate on the leaf, the leaf on the TLS handshake, and then there are two receipts from certificate transparency and optionally an OCSP staple. So we're looking at six signatures, two public keys. All right. Not all of these are the same uh, with requirements. For instance, some of those are generated on the fly, right? The TLS handshake signature is generated on the fly, and there it's, uh, we want the signing to be fast, right? Whereas the other signatures are generated offline. We don't care that much about the signing times. Uh, then some of those signatures, they have, they come with the public key, the, 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 the leaf certificate, the signature there, the public key is in the, is in the certificate, and we send it, right? But the root CA, the public key is not sent over the wire. So we don't care if that public key is a bit larger. So there are a few trade-offs here depending on the use of the signature. So here we have the signatures we have now in play. The, 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 top, the top two are classical, so we can't use them. Um, then we have a, a stateful hash-based. The four below, the, those are the ones that are uh, uh, close to be standardized by NIST. And as you can see, they're, they're all not that great. Falcon of them is the best, but it has the problem with the floating points when signing, so it's very difficult to implement. Uh, and down below, we have the, the most interesting ones, I think, from the, from the on-ramp. Uh, so the ones that have the one that's particularly interesting is Mayo. The interesting thing about Mayo is that it allows a smooth trade-off between signature size and public key size. So we have here one, there are two specific variants, but you can actually tweak it. This, this Mayo one has a public key size of one kilobyte, signature size of 300 bytes. And then Mayo two, it has a bigger public key, five and a half kilobytes, and signatures of 180 bytes. And actually, with Mayo, you can smoothly vary this. So if we figure out that some other trade-off is better for DNSSEC, we, we can go for that. The big question, of course, of Mayo is whether it's actually secure. It's part of the structured um, multivariates, same group as Rainbow, and that one got broken. So we will see. 
Then we have Skisign, which is, the sizes are fantastic. Uh, uh, only 177 bytes for signatures, but if you look at the signing times, that's just ridiculous. Um, uh, UOV is also very interesting. There are many variants of UOV uh, uh, proposals in the on-ramp, but they're all the same. Uh, large public keys, about 66 kilobytes, unfortunately, for you, Elmer, uh, but, but very small. Uh, uh, private keys. So this would be interesting for SCTs or root certificates where you don't need that many public keys. And finally, uh, there's Hawk, which is um, very comparable to Falcon in a sense. It adds another assumption, um, but uh, uh, it doesn't use floating points when signing. I don't expect Hawk to be selected though, unfortunately, because it's too close to Falcon and this desires to have something with a different uh, security assumption. Okay, so let's look at some concrete instances. Uh, uh, if we just allow ourselves the ones um, that NIST has selected to be standardized now, just Dilithium at 17 kilobytes, uh, Dilithium in a mix with Falcon at 8 kilobytes. Uh, if we use Sphinx, which is definitely secure, then we add 50 kilobytes, uh, and we have an order of magnitude burst signing time. So. Basically, only the first is the first two are somewhat reasonable. Maybe the, the Sphinx is for if your application doesn't mind the 50 kilobytes. But yeah, it doesn't work for the internet in general. We can also use stateful hash-based signatures. Um, at the moment, they start at um, hashes 192 bits, but actually for TLS, we could truncate to 128. Um, it's somewhat comp. Uh, uh, these are not standardized yet. Uh, uh, we lose non-repudiation. Uh, uh, stateful hash based signatures are very painful to work with. Uh, if you want to have efficient signing, you need a lot of pre-computation and storage. Uh, uh, and it's very challenging to keep the state. So I'd, I'd say stateful hash based signatures were interesting. But Falcon, I mean, they're both foot guns. They're both very easy to, 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 to make mistakes. And I'd say Falcon is the best of the worst. Um, for the web, at least. OK, uh, just with Mayo. Uh, so, OK, now, now let's look at what we can do with the signatures on the on-ramp, given they survive. Um, with Mayo, we can, use the, we can just use Mayo with the different variants. Uh, uh, for the different signatures, and then we add only three and a half kilobytes, which is which is very good. That, that, that's fantastic. Um, a different one is UOV for the for the roots and SETs, and then HOC for the handshake, and we get around also three kilobytes, which is very good. Um, but then uh, we do need 66 kilobytes for each root CA, but that's okay. It's only a hundred, so it's still acceptable. Um, we can also use UOV um, combined with Dilithium 2. Then we're looking at 7.5 kilobytes. I think that's a relatively conservative choice. Uh, and it's definitely easier to deploy than, than, than Falcon. So that's also very interesting. Finally, I'd like to mention SkiSign, which is, would be a drop-in on the size front. But we're looking at signing times over a second. Uh, and that's even with a non-constant time implementation. And we'd have verification times of 35 milliseconds uh, for each signature. So, uh, yeah, that, that's not going to fly. Uh, yeah, the, the graph yesterday here, so um, I talked about that yesterday. We, we experimented with what's the impact of bigger sizes, and you really want to stay below 10 kilobytes. Okay, so uh, that's expecting... Um, uh, 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 we can't hope for, for that these, well, UOV will survive. I'm pretty sure UOV, uh, 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 some UOV standard will be, some UOV variant will be standardized. But we can't expect um, a Mayo or, 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 the, uh, or HOC to, to be standardized. Uh, what, what, what can we do if we can't uh, de uh, act, uh, depend on them? Uh, one of them is leaving us intermediates, so most browsers already ship the intermediates. Uh, uh, to, uh, so why do servers still send the intermediates? There are, you would think this is a simple thing, uh, 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 but there's actually three different proposals to attack this. Um, 
There's one proposal originally by Martin Thompson, now picked up by, by, by Amazon, uh, is to just send a single bit which says, I've got intermediates, don't bother sending intermediates back to me. Uh, that's simple, but the problem is it's error prone. It could be that the problem with X509, one of the problems is that you can make multiple paths uh, and if you, uh, uh, sending the intermediates actually gives information and could change the behavior of clients. So that's one thing. Another thing is that it's, it's error prone. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe we don't have the intermediates. What's the visibility? Do we, we don't want to add a retry mechanism. So there's, there's some concerns with just that. A, a different proposal in the middle is um, uh, by Mozilla is where the clients, where we, um, uh, 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 make a list of intermediates from the CCA DB uh, and ship this to browsers, update it every, every year. Uh, and, and the client will say, I've got a list from this year. And then um, uh, the client says to the server, I've got a list for this year. The server knows the list and in case, uh, uh, and can replace the intermediates with the sequence numbers in that list. It also adds some other compression. Uh, that's, that, that's, uh, much more robust, a uh, bit more complicated to implement. And then finally, on the increasing complexity side is a proposal by, by, by Google to uh, 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 where the client tells exactly uh, which uh, routes it trusts, which CAs it actually trusts. Uh, this can be used to, to suppress intermediates because you can just add intermediates as a root and then you can say I trust these and if the uh, uh, server sees that the intermediate is trusted at the root, it can leave it out as well. All right, so even such a simple thing, three proposals and it's quite unclear which one it's going to be. Uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so what do we gain by leaving out intermediates? So this is uh, uh, Dennis from Mozilla uh, uh, took uh, a list of uh, popular size and looked at the size of the intermediates and what the different proposals do. And what we're looking at is uh, a savings of about three kilobytes, which is fantastic, right? Remember that if we used Mayo, we were adding three kilobytes. If we're suppressing intermediates, we're leaving out three kilobytes and even a little bit more. So we're actually, we'll, we'll be doing better. So um, that's quite exciting. Uh, also these savings, right? These are savings not just for post-quantum, these are savings classically, right? So these are, we're saving three kilobytes for, with classical certificates. So uh, yeah, that's great. All right. Um, another proposal is ChemTLS. Um, so at the moment, uh, we have a handshake signature. Uh, that means that, that uh, this, the server with its leaf, with the public key in the leaf, creates, creates a signature on the transcript so far on the TLS handshake to show, yes, you're talking to, to, to me. Um, we don't need to use a signature for this. Actually, uh, we can use a key agreement for it where, uh, uh, where the client encrypts a secret to the public key of the server. And if the server can decrypt it, then they must have, be the owner of the, of the, of the, uh, uh, of the of the leaf certificate, this seems like a, a newfangled idea, and in a way it is. But it's also been used in the past in uh, older versions of TLS. We did do this with RSA, um, but it's here it's done in a in a in a, in a better in a better way. Uh, anyway, um, uh, 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 the key idea here is that. CAMs are cheaper than signatures, at least at the moment. At the moment, the the the, the best available. Uh, Cam Kyber uh, 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 is, is, is smaller and faster than the, than the signatures that are available. Um, it's also interesting to embed it, where, uh, uh, because typically the, the handshakes, the best signature for a handshake is different than the signatures for the rest. And if you can use a Cam, you need a Cam anyway, so if you can use a Cam for both the handshake and the, and the, uh, 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 and the authentication, then that's one less primitive to worry about. So that's less code, less hardware, etc. Um, the performance is 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 good. Uh, uh, unfortunately, client authentication requires an extra round trip. Uh, otherwise, uh, and the, um, but otherwise, it's it's good. It's a big change to TLS. Uh, there are subtle changes in the security guarantees. 
Uh, we do have an, uh, uh, a formal analysis of it. I think if you, if you want to know, uh, Tom is in the back. He knows all about this. Uh, another problem here is uh, that it changes the flow uh, because we can't have a, a together certificate with a CAM public key in there. The CAM public key can't sign the, the, the certificate signing request. So how do you need, how do you prove proof of possession? Um, do we need proof of possession? I think that's, that's a question to ask. Do we, is it really that bad if you get a certificate on a public key that, that of someone else? I, I haven't, okay, I won't say <laughs> that it's safe. I'm just saying that no one has pointed out the reason why it's insecure or problematic. Um, so the, uh, but if we do want it, then we, it can be done in several ways. Uh, we can change the flow instead of having a, signed certif uh, a certificate signing request. We can have an interactive protocol where the CA challenges the, the, the uh, encrypt something for the public key, and when they see it can be decrypted, then they know it possess it. We can also turn a CAM into a signature scheme using zero knowledge proofs. That's still quite early and we're looking uh, at, uh, you've got a very in, uh, inefficient signature scheme, uh, signatures of 40 kilobytes or something like that. Anyway, this is still very early. I'd say, um, I think CAM TL is interesting, but it will depend on uh, it's a big change, so it's, it's, it, uh, I yeah. <laughs> so it, the, it will be interesting, especially if we do our best and we, and we get it smaller otherwise, the, 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 the relative gains are bigger if we're doing our best and the rest is smaller already. Uh, but okay, um, next one, Merkle tree certificates. Okay, there's uh, quite a few pain points in the current web PKI. Uh, Ah, sorry, I hope, who ca okay, if, if you've read the first line already, uh, who, who happens to know what's the most expensive part of running a CA? Any guesses? Sorry? Rev yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, uh, more specifically, it's responding to OCSP. So the <laughs> most expensive part is, so there's this protocol where you can ask a CA, is this certificate still valid or has it been revoked? And uh, 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 the traffic on this on CS is, is huge. It's, it's, it's a lot. Uh, um, and the sad thing is, is that most browsers don't even use it because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a privacy problem. But it's uh, somewhere, in some software, an auditor says, you need to check OCSP, someone copies something from Stack Overflow and now the application checks OCSP every time. I, th I think this is this is terrible. What browsers use is actually they use CRL Lite. They get the list of revoked certificates and compress it using uh, CRL Lite. Uh, there's also too many signatures, which I've shown before. Uh, certificate transparency is, is 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 difficult to run, and there are many sharp edges: path building, uh, Punicode, uh, constraint validation is a mess, uh, and domain control validation is imperfect. That that's not addressed here. So the marginal cost of changing the web PKI now is lower than it will ever be with the post-quantum transition, right? So if we're going to do anything, we should do it now. Uh, it's of course the question whether it will succeed, but I mean, now is the time to try. Uh, it's a concrete proposal. Um, well, the design, the, the, the design space here is huge. Uh, so it's just one of the possible proposals. Um, uh, we wanted to make a concrete proposal uh, but we don't, we're not saying this is the right proposal, but it's concrete and ambitious and we're looking for feedback on the design. Um, it doesn't solve the problem completely. It's uh, an optimization for the common case. So in the most common case, when the client is up to date uh, and can update itself, then it will end the domain and the uh, certificate has been issued for a while, then it works. Otherwise, it will fall back to uh, x plus certificate transparency. All right, so what's the idea? Uh, every hour, or whatever it be, a CA publishes a list of assertions. So that's basically the certificates. But if, if I say certificate, you think of signature. There's no signatures here yet. Every hour, CA publishes all the assertions. And an assertion is, this public key belongs to this domain. Or 
if you want to go to this domain, trust this public key. This is called a batch. Uh, every batch is valid for uh, a fixed amount of time, the same amount of time. Uh, so all the batches that are currently uh, 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 valid are called the window, which can be, for instance, 14 days or 90 days or, or a year. And for e so we have, at the moment, there's batches which are published every hour. Uh, uh, for, for, uh, about 300 of them are valid. Uh, and what we do is, on each of these batches, we build a Merkle tree. And the roots of those Merkle trees, we, the CA created a signature on that. So that's the first signature. That's the only signature yet. So every hour, there's one signature. All right. So trust services, which could be uh, independent trust services or, uh, uh, or browser vendors, they regularly pull from the CAs the list, these, these batches, and the, the, the window signatures and verify them for consistency. All right, so this, this uh, uh, solves, uh, this takes the role of certificate transparency. Uh, there's also uh, 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 very few signatures here. Okay. Now they verify them, and if, if everything is correct, if there's no things going awry, then the, the, the browser sends just the roots, just the 32 bytes times 300, so that's uh, about just the nine kilobytes they send to the browsers. All right, now what is a certificate here in this situation? What does the server send to the client? Well, that's the assertion. So the, this public key, or oh, actually this public key belongs to this uh, 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 domain, uh, together with a Merkle tree authentication path. And uh, the browser can check this because it has the, the, the list of routes it got from the browser vendor. So, uh, a server would typically install three certificates, uh, two Merkle tree certificates, uh, seven days apart, uh, and a fallback X59 certificate. Uh, when connecting to a server, the client sends, uh, needs to send which batches it actually has. Uh, uh, so this again is why the uh, trust negotiation of Google's proposal, it matches nicely with this. Um, if the client is not sufficiently up to date, so if the client is up to date, then the server can return the Merkle tree certificates. And if it's not up to date enough, then it will just return the X59 certificate. So what sizes can we expect? Uh, there are now uh, 6 billion unexpired certificates in CT. If they are reissued every seven days, uh, then we will have batches. And there's only one Merkle tree CA, but there will be many. But if there's more, one Merkle tree CA, we'll have batches of 35 million. Uh, that means that we'll have an authentication path of 832 bytes. Um, so the only thing that's left then in a handshake is the, the only signature left is the, the dilithium signature for the handshake uh, and this authentication path. Um, uh, uh, together this will be well below two and a half kilobytes, which is smaller than the median compressed intermediate certificate that we have. So this will be smaller than what we have now, even if it's post-quantum. So, okay, we saw, different, we saw a lot of different approaches. Uh, and um, from rather simple to ambitious. And I think there are many unknowns here, right? Uh, what will the compliance requirements be? Uh, what will the cryptanalytic breakthroughs be? How ossified is this ecosystem? What are the constraints of all the stakeholders? Um, which approach to take? Uh, I would say it's good to have multiple pots on the stove, so to say. Okay, uh, that's it. I, I, please do, if you have any ideas or want to test any of this, please do reach out to us. Uh, this is the time. Any questions? Thank you, Abbas. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'd actually like to start with a question from the online audience. Uh, the question is, what if code-based signatures will be standardized? How much worse is it than Mayo? Oh, I don't have the numbers from the top of my head, but they're not competitive as far as I know. Yeah, to at least the ones in the on-ramp. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I like code-based. <laughs> is there anyone in the room who would like to ask a question? Yeah, 
Thanks for a nice uh, overview. Uh, it's a small question on something you said at the beginning uh, regarding uh, stateful hash-based signatures. You said that we lose non-repudiation if, if you're using, if I understand correctly. Well, if, uh, that's only if you, uh, so, so, so uh, at the moment, so at the moment you have the parameter n, which is a security parameter, and uh, at the moment they started 192, which is standardized. And the reason they started 192 is that uh, the, the security against forgery is exactly that number, right? So that's 192 bits. But the security against the signer creating two messages of, on and a, a single signature, which works on two different messages, that's half that. So that's, that's in this case, 2 to the 64. And that's non-repudiation. So you can try to solve non... So the non-repudiation is, I sign something, I can't take it back, right? So if, if you can create two messages and one signature that works on both, then that's broken, at least directly. But you can also solve this on different levels, right? So that's the, but that's the reason that stateful hash-based signatures start at 192 at the moment. But I'm computing here with 128 because only then they're somewhat competitive. Okay, I see, yeah. Thanks. Uh, with Merkle tree certificates, is there any mechanism to make sure that the trust vendors, the ones who are amalgamating all of these assertions together, are not censoring them in some way? Because it seems like, you know, at the moment, right now, it's quite hard for one particular government to censor all CAs worldwide. But if now it's they just need to censor Google, uh, that becomes a lot easier, right? Yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, <laughs> in the drafts, uh, uh, I, I couldn't completely describe it. There's a, also there's still monitors. So the uh, uh, the monitors will will so the, the the trust services they will re-export via the same simple interface. There's the the mirror they have, so they will mirror all the assertions, and then monitors can can check on them. Uh, but yeah, this is a complicated thing, right? Because also. Um, what if Google in the Chrome source code just has a line which says, only <laughs> skip this, right? It's a subtle thing, but uh, there's monitors, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that kind of just solving CT by running CT again? Uh, no, 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 but the monitors, m monitors are easier. So the, prom the problem with CT now is that this, the, so, so what we do is we move the logs from, from, from the trust service to the, to, the, to the CA in a sense. Uh, and the, the, the essential difference is what makes CA, CT difficult to run today is that once a CA gets a, uh, a signed certificate timestamp, gets the receipt, it then has to include it in time, right? And that's the part that's, that's, that's difficult about it, one of the parts. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Yeah, we have some time. Uh, yeah, so for the um, Merkle tree certificates, um, I can see that as a client it would be pretty easy to uh, uh, verify. Um, just wondering if I'm running a server, do I need uh, dozens of, of copies of these uh, uh, certification trees so I can actually send out the right uh, path to my clients? Yeah, so imagine that, um, uh, I would imagine that the server, that's, that's right, the server would want to have uh, 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 two Merkle tree certificates. Uh, which are overlapping, right? So one that's more recent, one that's a bit older, uh, and, and an old x certificate still. Uh, I would imagine that that uh, that that uh, third bot would take care of this. Uh, 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 and there's still some argument whether we should use separate files. I, th I think it should be a bit cheeky and just put them in in one one file so that we don't need to change every all the servers out there and then put it in. Anyway. Um, so I would imagine that uh, 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 that your your Ac Acme update service would take care of managing this, so you're not. All right. Then, if there are no more questions, let's thank Bas again. <laughs> In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.